Hello, my name is Aneruda Ned Carney, and today I'm going to show you how to use a Maclaurin series to find the tenth derivative at zero for f of x equals the integral from zero to x of cosine three root t dt. So let's get started. Since we're taking the tenth derivative and we have an integral in our function, why don't we take the derivative one time? so that we can make our Maclaurin series a lot easier. So our derivative becomes cosine 3 root t since we just removed the integral. And because we took the derivative, this t can actually become an x. So we have cosine 3 root x as our first derivative. But we have to remember that since we were taking the tenth derivative initially as our final answer, we want the ninth derivative of this function at zero. This is important because this number nine will be used later on to find our final value. Since we're using a Maclaurin series, let's take the general formula for the cosine x Maclaurin series, which is the sum from k equals zero to infinity of negative 1 to the k times x to the 2k all over 2k quantity factorial. <coughs> From there we know we're looking for cosine of 3 root x so we can plug in 3 root x to get cosine of 3 root x equals the sum k equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the k times 3 root x to the 2k all over 2k quantity factorial. Now let's simplify this before we move further. We know that this value is squared and then taken to the k power since the exponent is 2 times k multiplied. So this 3 can actually be written as a 9 to the k. And this x, square root of x, actually, actually can be written as x to the k, since the square root of x squared is simply x. And we can combine this negative 1 and the 9. So our simplified version becomes cosine 3 root x equals the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of negative 9 to the k times x to the k all over 2k quantity factorial. And that's the Maclaurin representation of our function. Now let's move away from the Maclaurin series and go to our Taylor series representation. Since we use the Taylor series to derive our Maclaurin series, we know that the Taylor series representation will be equal to the Maclaurin series representation. The general form for a Taylor series would be k equals 0 to infinity, the sum of the kth derivative at a over k factorial multiplied by x minus a to the k. But we must remember that a Maclaurin series is centered at 0, which makes our a value equal to 0. So our Taylor representation would be the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of the kth derivative at 0 times x to the k all over k factorial. So here we can see our Maclaurin representation and our Taylor representation next to one another. What do we notice about the two values? They both have this term, x to the k, which means that these coefficients must also be equal, since these representations are equal. This is important because this coefficient contains 
the kth derivative at 0, and we're looking for the ninth derivative at 0. So if we solve for that, we can set the kth derivative at 0 over k factorial this coefficient equal to this coefficient, which is negative 9 to the k all over 2k quantity factorial. And if we solve for the kth derivative at 0, we get k factorial multiplied by negative 9 to the k all over 2k quantity factorial. Now, all we have to do is plug in a 9 for the k value. Since we're taking the ninth derivative after already taking the derivative one time from our original function. So, our k value is 9. We can move this up and write the ninth derivative at 0 is equal to 9 factorial times negative 9 to the ninth power all over. 18 factorial. Again, every k value in this equation is replaced with a 9. And 2 times 9 is 18, which is why we have 18 factorial on the denominator. This is our exact value for the tenth derivative at 0 for our function initially. The approximate value can be evaluated as negative point zero two one nine five eight six and both are equal to the tenth derivative at zero for the initial function. Thank you.